So in an earlier video, we took a look at the gains from exchange, that is the benefits to a country in terms of higher uh, GDP and consumption possibilities. If it opens to trade, keeps the production level fixed, and just trades on the international market at the new international prices. But that's not the total gains that are available to a country. The, there's a strong incentive to change the combination of goods that you produce if there are new um, international prices. So just recall that we have a situation in, in autarky where GDP was $350 at uh, these prices. We had gains from exchange with fixed levels of production, but n the new prices, where we ended up having a, a GDP of $475 with the given production and these new prices. Now, one of the, and so this is depicted by uh, a line going through the PPF at this point, okay, and the slope of that line is the relative prices on the international market for Y per X, given these uh, individual nominal prices. This red line was the consumption possibilities of the country if it traded on international markets but kept production fixed. It's another way of thinking about that is that the, this is the, uh, a depiction of the value of national income at this production level and international prices. Okay, so one of the things about point A, though, is that that's not a situation that is likely to remain. There are going to be incentives for firms to change their production levels. If you recall that the slope of the PPF is the ratio of the marginal cost for that given level of production. And what we have here at point A is that the world relative price of X, and the absolute value of that, the slope of the slope, is greater than the absolute value of the slope of the PPF. What does that mean? It means that the relative price of X in the international market exceeds the relative cost of producing it domestically. So firms seeing that are going to say, look, if I expand my production of X, I will be able to make some profits. This is not a, a situation that I'm going to remain in. I'm not going to leave money on the table. This is an, a signal for producers in X to produce more. If you look at it, the, the inverse, it's a signal for the producers of Y to produce less. So, they're going to change the production combination until the point where these two are equal. You're going to expand the production of X, which raises the marginal cost, re reduce the production of Y, which, which will lower its marginal cost. So you're going to be going down to some place like this, where the world relative prices are going to be equal to the ratio of the marginal cost. Okay, so here we've got this point B, which graphically we can understand from this uh, uh, relationship. And I'm going to put some numbers into this. pulled out of the air. Let me be clear about that. These are pulled out of the air. All I know is that you increase the production of X, you decrease the production of Y, and the combination is going to be such that the relative prices in the international market equal the relative costs in the domestic uh, market in terms of production. Okay? So now we have this point, and the consumers can, in this market, the, the value of national income is given by that line, okay, just as we had before. So let's take a look at what that, uh, what that GNP is going to be now. So we've got 10 units of Y, okay, that's it, $5 per Y, that's the, the prices that we talked about before, 
up here. We've got 25 units of X evaluated at $20 per X. So we've got uh, the, the, the value of production of Y is $50. The value of production of X is $500, so that the overall GNP is now $500. By altering the production combination, we see we can go from a GDP of $475 to $550. So, once again, we're going to see that there are gains in terms of GDP from specializing, from changing the combination of goods that are, um, that are produced. Now, so how much of this good Y can they now consume with this new income? Right, so we can take a look at that. Okay, you start out with 10 units of Y Okay, by assumption, we've got 25 units of X. The international prices are 4Y for every X. The X is four times as expensive, more valuable than, than Y. And so we can turn these 25 units of X into... 100 units of Y added to the 10 units of Y that we started with. In other words, that point is 110 Y. So there are extra benefits associated with specializing uh, according to comparative advantage. So, again, we can think about the gains from trade is really broken up into two parts. One, the gains from exchange, simply trading what you got in hand, and the other is gains from specialization, which is when you change the combination of goods that you produce. So the way I like to think about this is that simply being willing to trade on international markets gives us, instead of a maximum of 20 units of Y consumed in autarky, 95 units. So this would be the gains from exchange in terms of what you can consume of Y. The gains from exchange is this last bit. That's the increase in national income, essentially, and then its ability to buy Y, if you change your combination of goods that you produce as a signal taken from the international prices. So again, let me emphasize that this final outcome at B we're now going to have the world relative prices being equal to the relative uh, costs. When you gain, with gains from exchange that was not the case. You had incentives to change the production levels. Now when we allow production to, to move in response to the change in prices, we get this equilibrium outcome.